Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you what you can do if you're in a bind and your laptop and your computer is overheating. Now, this is a temporary fix. Obviously, you're gonna to need to fix the problem for a lo more long-term solution, but if you're not able to get it to a shop for whatever reason, or if you're just not familiar on how to fix it yourself, this definitely can work for you. Now, I see this a lot for laptops. It does happen for desktops, obviously, but laptops just tend to generate a lot of heat, and they're the first ones to suffer from overheating issues uh, more quickly compared to desktops based upon my experiences. Now this is really easy to do, doesn't require any modding, opening up, cleaning, changing of thermal paste or anything like that. So if you're not comfortable doing that type of stuff, you could try this temporary fix and at least it could get you by just a little bit longer. So what happens is, is that when your computer starts overheating, either the thermal paste has gone bad, so you're not getting good heat transfer from the CPU to the heat sink, the fans may be clogged, the heat sinks may be clogged. And what happens is, is that it generates a lot of heat because you don't have good cooling efficiency. When your computer's running idle, it's not really doing anything, but as you start using it, whether it's gaming and uh, downloading tasks or all that type of stuff, it needs more power. So the computer has to generate more power to keep up with it. And as you generate more power, you generate more heat. And what the computer does to kind of keep itself from nuclear melting is that it starts thermal throttling or downclocking itself. It brings down the frequencies, voltage, all that type of stuff so it doesn't create any damage. And what we're gonna do in Windows by just changing a quick setting, we're gonna limit how much power the CPU gets. Now you are gonna take a performance loss on this, but you might not need all that power just to kind of finish this up. And I'm talking for those that are just, you know, typing up some documents, doing a quick Zoom meeting, browsing the web, checking emails, all that type of stuff. Now, if you're a gamer, this is obviously not gonna be ideal for you because you need all the performance you can get out of your system, but for just everyday use, this does work. Let's head over to the bench. Let me show you what we need to do and how easy this is. Now I am gonna be doing this on a desktop, but it applies the same way for a laptop. There's no difference in that. The setting is the same whether you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11. So first thing I wanna do is just kind of give us a baseline of our performance. Now this computer doesn't have any overheating issues, but we can still lower the temperatures to something that's a lot more manageable. So now you don't have to download this program, but this is just so we can see the temperatures in real life. But right now at idle, my temperature is 62 degrees Celsius. This is a Ryzen 7 5700 system. It is a little warm because I'm running a Mickey Mouse cooler on it, just one that's not ideal for it, but it gets the job done for what I needed. But moving on, as you can see, 58, 60 degrees Celsius, and we're just at idle. So I'm gonna run a stress on it. We're gonna use Cinebench, and you don't have to download this software, but like I said, this is just so you can see that this does work. We're gonna start the test. Take a look at our temperatures, and we're starting to boost up to 65 degrees Celsius. We had a spike to 68. Our clocks, as you can see, are 4.3 gigahertz. Max is 4.8 gigahertz. So let's run this for a little bit, and let's see what our temperatures are once it's got a heat soak on it. So I've been running this for a few minutes. Our temperature is hitting 70 degrees Celsius, which is good for this system. This system doesn't have an overheating issue, but in the case of laptops that I've seen, or even systems with cooling issues, this temperature could spike up to well over 90 to 100 degrees Celsius, which is gonna cause our issues. And then what happens is, is that our clocks, they start downclocking itself to kind of keep it uh, from causing damage to the CPU. In the event that the system is overheating, it is running uh, poorly or it starts shutting down. So if it was hitting like 100 degrees Celsius, some systems just shut down just to preserve itself. What we need to do is we need to lower these temperatures, but what we're gonna end up doing is lowering these clocks. And the easiest way to do it without going into the BIOS or any other fancy settings is through Windows. So we're gonna go to our search tab right over here and what we're gonna type is power and you should see edit power plan. Or you could type edit power plan. Once the screen pops up, we're gonna go to change advanced power settings. And then you should have this screen pop up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down till we have processor power management. And what we're gonna do is maximum processor state, where it says setting 100%, we're gonna lower it. Now this is where your mileage may vary. Sometimes you just might need to lower it 10%, 20%, 30%. It just depends on how bad your system is overheating. When you lower this, it's gonna lower the clocks of the system. It's gonna produce a lot less heat and could make the system more usable and keep it from shutting down or just crashing and all other types of stuff. So for this one, we're just gonna keep it simple and we're gonna set the maximum processor state to 80%. We're gonna hit apply. 
and we're going to press OK. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go rerun the Cinebench R23 test and you're going to see that our temperatures should be a lot lower but also our clocks are lower. So we're going to start the test again. Now that we're at 80%, test is starting so let's open up our temperatures. And as you can see our temperatures went from 71.6 which was the max. Now we're just sitting at 39.4.3 degrees Celsius and we've gained a 20 degree improvement in our temperatures, which is significant. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow the fans to run less, so keep them from running 100%, but it's also gonna make the system more usable if it was overheating. Now, if you look at our clocks, and this is where you lose performance, we went from averaging, what was it? I think it was 4.3 gigahertz, our boost is 4.8. We're only at 2.9 gigahertz, which yes, that's a significant uh, performance loss, but if you're just needing this to kind of finish up your Word document, browsing the internet, emails, or just enter any light activity type stuff, then this is more than enough what you need to do it. Obviously, if we're going to game on it, we're going to see a hit in our frames per second, but if you're just somebody that's just trying to use this for basic stuff and you need a quick fix to get your work done, this definitely can work for you. And the biggest advantage is that our fan speeds are going to be a lot quieter and not ramping up as much. And even if they have to ramp up at 100%, but we have lower frequencies, the temperature should be a lot lower, still making the laptop and or computer more usable. And one thing to keep in mind, if you're going to do this, don't forget to undo it once you get it fixed. That way you can get all your performance back. So as you can see, a real quick and easy temporary fix. This is not a long-term fix. Obviously, you're gonna to need to address the issue. Another thing that you can run into if that is the fan is not working, this might not get the job done. Now, I chose 20% for this. As you can see, the temperatures that we got was 20%. Sometimes you just might need 10%, and then other times you might need to get 30 or 40% less. But if it's still not getting the job done, go a little bit lower. Now, another advantage that I personally use this for is uh, for my personal laptop. I like to watch videos, YouTube, all that type of stuff, and I wanna kind of preserve the battery a little bit more. And what this will do is give you a little bit more battery life, also make the fan a lot quieter. So if you're just kind of sitting around doing nothing, um, it's not as annoying. So that is another advantage of it. But ultimately, definitely get it fixed. Bring it to a shop, try to fix it yourself. But if you're in a pinch, this might work for you. So hope this tip helps. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.